I got ten on two. What you got? It's good. How are you? Good. How are you? Everybody, hey. everybody get a seat. How are you doing, man? Randy. Hey. Everybody get a seat. We'll get this meeting started. It's two minutes after ten or three. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, I'm glad you made it out. It's good to see a lot of people. Anybody else feel that way? <laughs> good to be here to see people and uh, glad everybody joined us that zoomed in this morning. I'm going to call this meeting to order and I'm going to ask Miss Sherry if she would to call up. Brent Bush, Andy Duggan, Dale Reagan, here, here. Tanya Spears. Oh. Alan Foster. Here. James Mayberry. Here. He's here. Tim Stribling. Here. Josh Miller. Jimmy Johnson. Here. Harvey Stowers. Randy Hetty. Here. Lloyd Williams. Here. Steve Jones. Here. Jerry Wilmore. Here. Ben Danner. Yes. Curtis Hayes. Carrie Garner, Sam Gibson, here. Randy Porter, here. Ricky Shelton, Jeff Mason, here. Sarah Marie Smith, here. Greg Wilson, Mickey Robinson. Jimmy Haley. Here. Ron Chastain. Marvin Lusk. Here. Denny Wayne Robinson. Here. Jeff Young. Representative Cameron Sexton. Senator Paul Bailey. Present. <laughs> It's good to see Senator Bailey. <laughs> good deal. Uh, next thing on the agenda, thank you, Mr. Chair. We have a quorum. We have quorums. Next thing on the agenda will be approval of the consent agenda, which consists of the executive committee meeting minutes from October 21st, 2020. Any questions or amendments need to be made to the minutes? Entertain a motion to approve. So, so Got a motion by Dee Wayne Robinson. Got a second by Mayor Tim Stribling. All righty, if there will not be anything else, we'll ask Ms. Sherry to call the roll. You, you can do a roll call for that. Yeah. You wanted to you just do a roll or a voice. Uh, hey, if it's all right with everybody else, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Likewise say aye. I got any thumbs downs up there? All right. Motion passed. Good deal. Good to know, Mark. Thank you. Next thing on the agenda is the UCDD financial report by Ginger Stout, finance director. Ginger. <laughs> Each of you should have received a copy of the financial report for the development district through December. Um, we have a total of revenues of a little over $3.8 million, expenditures of 3.9, which includes match for our contracts. Um, and then you can see that we have some CDBG revenue for matching and our state match. And then we have non-grant related expenditures of 42,000 which would put us at this point through the year, a little bit of a negative of $2,554. But this isn't super concerning because as you can see our CDBG revenue throughout the year, we typically receive most of those funds towards the end of our fiscal year. So we're pretty much on target where we would expect to be at this point of the year. Anybody have any questions?
Anybody got any questions for Ms. Ginger? Ginger? Thank you. All right, if we don't have any questions, I will entertain a motion to accept the report by Ms. Ginger Stout. I got a motion by Mr. Mayor Mason. Second. Got a second by, excuse me, Marvin. Mr. Marvin, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Likewise. Slow. I'll calm down. Motion passed. <laughs> I'll try to slow down. I ain't good at that. Next thing on the agenda, uh, CAIC loans. Um, I think this is going to be given by Jesse Billard. Hey, Jesse. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll do it. I miss with you for one minute. I know this is not to be time, but you do it. So. Yep. Now you're back to where you need to be. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jesse Billard, the loan officer here at the Upper Cumberland Development District. This morning, we have two disaster loans that I would like to present to you. The first one is the Stolen Coin. It is a restaurant in downtown Gainesboro, Tennessee, um, established this year, and they're asking for $25,000 for working capital. They're doing some construction renovations. Me, myself, Myself, Tyler Asher with the Small Business Development Center and Mayor Hetty went and toured the restaurant and met with them for, had a meeting for two hours to talk about their marketing and advertising of what would better help them. And they feel like this disaster line would help, help them greatly. Uh, our next disaster loan is Serenity Wellness Spa. It is in Crossville, established in 2019, and this um, loan is asking for 25,000 as well. I spoke with this lady, and when she was established in 2019, she was only open eight months before the pandemic hit. And then, of course, with her with that style of business, it categorized them in the salon, hair salon. So they were forced to shut down. So she's really wanting this for to catching up on her rent, um, ordering more products for the business and working capital needs. Any comments or questions? This is point where it's up. In our budget, are these this is part of our revolving loan fund. It's a whole separate pot of money that we have that we loan out money for businesses. Uh, we, yeah. So we probably have a little bit over uh, $1.5 million. $1.5 million is for those online is what we have in that account. And were there others who applied or were there others who applied this time? These were the only two. Yes, ma'am. This is ongoing. If you know of businesses that may need this service, obviously you can refer them to us. We, we will make loans to them as well. And both of these loans did come from the Small Business Development Center. And then going back to Serenity Wellness, she did try to, she wanted to apply for the PPP, but what she realized, what she was going to get back, she felt like it was, she was only going to get $250. So she figures that this would help out a lot more. I'm sorry, one more question. If we have someone you might need one, contact Jesse yes, Miller. How does the collateral work on the So collateral, we will file a uniform commercial code, the UCC, um, holding any equipment. 
it's all got all included. Yes. Right. That's my understanding, correct? Correct. I do know in the instance with the uh, stolen coin that uh, where they hadn't been uh, open long enough when they went to the bank, um, they just hadn't been open long enough to show that that would, you know, how banks are. So that's what the loan was put in for. I know that me and Tyler and Jesse, all three felt real good about this one. Um, and, and I'd appreciate you to consider this one, if you would, the stolen coin. And I'm, I'm sure the Serenity Wellness Spa is good too. Do you want these approved together or do you just want separate? I don't have a problem doing them together or separate. And if no one has a problem, Alan? I, I don't personally know or know they're in a great location. <laughs> they, they couldn't be in a better location on Keeper Road up there. But uh, going into the turn of the we have a lot of traffic. So, you know, that's about all I know, but they're in the perfect location. I know that Jesse uh, has vetted both of these and feels good about them. Yes, sir. I got a motion by Denny Wayne Robinson to approve both of them together and a second by Mayor Lloyd Williams. Is there any other discussion or questions or comments to be about these loans? Thank you, Jason. If not, I'm going to ask Ms. Sherry if she would call roll. Second. Yes. And Reagan? Yeah. Alan Foster? Yes. Tim Strickland? Yes. Jimmy Johnson? Yes. Randy Handy? Yes. Steve Jones? Yes. Ben Banner? Yes. Randy Porter? Yes. Jeff Mason? Yes. Jimmy Haley? Yes. Any problems? Yes. All right, motion passed. Thank you all. Next thing on the agenda would be the micro loan program update given by Executive Director Mark Park. Uh, just want to take a, a minute. If you remember, uh, probably it's been over a year now, uh, we developed what we call the micro uh, lending program. And it is designed to work with uh, startup businesses, those entrepreneurs that are not yet established but are trying to get established, uh, to give them a little seed capital, be able to get off the ground and start the process. So hopefully then they can move to a bank and, and do traditional mortgages and or loans through the bank, uh, their banking partner. Uh, we've been very successful in that. I know we've done over 10 uh, in the last year, year and a half. Uh, and, and we've been very excited with this program. Uh, we have, you have allocated, uh, initially you allocated $150,000 and then we come back to you because it went really well. You put another 150,000 into it. And right now we're at 270,000 that we have loaned out out of that 300,000. And we'd like to request another $150,000 to continue this program on. It's been pretty successful. We see these businesses really getting off the ground and, and getting going. And we think this will be beneficial moving forward. Uh, and in just a second, I'm gonna talk about uh, uh, an, another opportunity we have, but uh, we would like your approval to increase this amount by $150,000 for us to do these loans. Keep in mind, these are very small. They're up to $30,000 is the, is the max. Uh, and they are uh, for individuals who are working with the Small Business Development Center or through the Biz Foundry or an established program of that type. Did everybody hear the, uh, Mr. Farley uh, about asking if we would increase uh, the micro loan program uh, amount from 300,000 uh, to 450, I believe. It would take it up to that, yes. To, to $450,000. Uh, how many of y'all have been uh, been able to be a part of see the micro loan program work in your community? I was just curious about that. I know that I have, uh, and uh, it's a very good very good program uh, to get, especially young people, young small businesses off the ground. So, any questions from Mr. Barley on the micro loan? Yes, Mr. Jones. I just want to make a motion. I appreciate that, uh, Mayor Jones. Uh, uh, Steve uh, has uh, Steve Jones has made a motion to approve moving it from three hundred to four hundred fifty thousand. Second. Uh, 
think I heard a second. Do you know who from? That's from Dale, Randy. I'm sorry. That's all right. Mayor Reagan, we appreciate it. We got a motion by Steve to approve uh, moving the micro loan program from 300 to 450 in the second by Dale Reagan. Did you have a question? Well, in the it is out of that revolving loan fund. Yes, uh, that we've talked. About. Yeah, we've got a we've got separate pools of funds for our revolving loan fund program that runs separate, and that's all that money is dedicated for. So it does not operate through our budget. So we have actually borrowed that from the state, or is that? Uh, we have uh, currently three pots of funds. Uh, two of those have been grants that have been given to us to start these funds. One is a loan program through the U.S. Department of Agriculture Rural Development, where they, uh, they have given us a pot of money, and then we're paying back the principal, but we get the interest. That, that's, that's the only revolving yeah. Money. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, we're I'm going to talk about another one here in just a second, so... Oh, that's a good question. Hey, thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, we appreciate that, Mayor. Anybody else got any questions? All right, we have a motion and a second. And <coughs> Mr. Sherry, please call Rose. Dale Reagan? Yes. Alan Foster? Yes. James Mayberry? Yes. Tim Stribman? Yes. Jimmy Johnson? Yes. Randy Eddy? Yes. Lori Williams? Yes. Steve Jones? Yes. Jerry Wilmot? Yes. Ben Danner? Yes. Sam Gibson? Yes. Randy Porter? Yes. Jeff Mason? Yes. Sarah Marie Smith? Yes. Jimmy Haley? Yes. Marvin Lusk? Yes. Penny Robinson? Yes. Senator Paul Bailey. He's glad to push you. I don't know. Motion, motion passed. That's good. A little, a little late question, though. Uh, I voted yes, but do city mayors vote on the approval of these uh, On these, they do. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one other update I wanted to give to the to the board. Uh, this microloan program has not gone unnoticed, and actually, there is a CDF uh, CDFI uh, uh, group out of Chattanooga called Bright Bridge Financial. Uh, did I get that correct, Tyler? Uh, Bright Bridge Financial, who has approached us because they really like what they're seeing here. And they have, uh, they have asked us to uh, make a presentation to them about them possibly investing a million dollars of their funds and allowing us to administer that on their behalf. Uh, we are still in negotiations with that. It is not a formalized uh, deal yet or any, anything along that line. Hopefully by our next board meeting, we'll have something to bring back to you for your approval for that. But I uh, just wanted to let you know that is in the works. Uh, if we would do that, they've asked us to consider going up to $50,000, a few things like that might make it a little different from what we're already doing. Uh, but they're very excited. They like what this is doing. And, and what they're doing is they're, they're working with our local banks to get some money invested in their program, and they want to show a return back to those banks into the region. So obviously it would be money that's originated probably from our local banks. So, But that's coming down the road, hopefully. All right. Do we need to uh, do a uh, vote on your executive director report? No, not yet. We're, All right. No. So the next thing on the agenda is the EDA resolution. Yeah, you'll find uh, it is uh, in your notebooks, and I should have said this earlier. We've got some little colored tabs. This is the red tab behind uh, tab number one. And you'll see resolution number 21-2-1. And, and, and we'll talk about revolving loan funds just a little bit longer. Going back in the mid 80s, the Economic Development Administration, like I said, issued us a grant in the, in the amount of, I think, one and a half million dollars. Uh, we've had that, and I don't know the exact year, but it's somewhere mid 80s 
is when that was given to us. And obviously at that time, the development district put some of its own funds into it. Uh, I think another additional million dollars to make an initial pool of two and a half million dollars. That money has turned over and turned over and turned over and turned over. And Ginger, am I correct? We're somewhere around the $5 million mark now. So it's more than doubled since the 1980s through the interest that's been collected. Uh, one of the last things that, that happened in the previous Congress is they passed legislation to defederalize these old loan, <coughs> these old loan programs. So up until, uh, well, all the way through today, we have to report every six months about these loan programs and they've defederalized that now. So they're basically saying they've washed their hands of it. It's free and clear, but we do need a resolution saying this is what we're going to continue operating it as a revolving loan fund program and uh, that we request that they uh, no longer ask for reports from us. So uh, I know uh, Megan deals with this uh, every six months. It is a very detailed report that has to be submitted. I mean, we still report on loans that was done in the mid 80s. So this takes quite a bit of reporting off of our plate. So I would ask that you pass resolution 21-2-1 that will allow us to, uh, to take ownership of this grant the, that was given to us in 1985, 86, somewhere in that range. Any questions about this resolution? If not, I entertain a motion to approve. Make all Got a motion by Jimmy Johnson to approve resolution 21-2-1. Uh, I get her second. Got a second by Mayor Smith. All right, Miss Ginger, if you would please call the roll. Kayle Reagan? Yeah. Alan Foster? Yes. Yeah. James Mayberry? Yes. Tim Strickland? Yes. Yeah. Jimmy Johnson? Yes. Randy Candy? Yes. Lori Williams? Yes. Dick Jones? Yes. Jerry Wilmore? Yes. Dan Danner? Yes. Sam Gibson? Randy Porter? Yes. Joe Mason? Yes. Sam Marie Smith? Mm -hmm. Jimmy Hagley? Yes. Margaret Lutz? Yes. Dean Robinson? Yes. Senator Paul Bailey? Motion passed. All right, next thing on the agenda would be the executive director's report. Mr. Farley? Okay. Uh Got a few things. I've got a few individuals I want to uh, introduce to you and have them say just a few words under my executive report. Uh, we're very excited. We've got a couple programs that's starting uh, here in the region. Uh, one of them is uh, we're working in a partnership with WCTE, and I see Becky McGura back in the back back there. Avery, are you by yourself today? All right. Uh, Becky is here with us. We've been talking about a partnership working with WCTE to do uh, some tourism work. And I'm gonna ask Mandy Eller if she would to come up. Mandy started with us probably about six months ago. She's formerly with the Warren County Matt Menville Chamber of Commerce. And we were able to uh, uh, pick her up working on tourism related products under the COVID funding. Uh, how, how do we help the communities draw people into the region? So Mandy, I'm gonna let you talk just a little bit about what you're doing and we'll talk about our partnership with WCTE. Thank you, Mr. Farley. Well, thank you um, for having me here today. Uh, yes, so as, as he explained, my position was created um, with some CARES Act money, and my focus is in tourism. Of course, with my background at the chamber, that was how that came about. Um, and, you know, we knew from the beginning we were going to be working on marketing strategies with each community working with chambers. Um, we knew that we wanted to do marketing videos. Tommy Lee had invested in a drone with some of that money. And, um, you know, we, but we also started meeting with our regional and state partners to see uh, what, you know, maybe where there was a gap and what wasn't being completed and where we could fill that void. And we found that there was a big opportunity in creating curated day trips. This was something when I was at the chamber, we never really got to do as much as I wanted to. Um, and so this is what we've actually come up with here. Um, so these day trips will be by interest, 
by season, and we're starting county by county. And how we're developing these is through a tourism audit. We're also creating a database with all the tourism assets across the region. And so then we can take that and create these curate, curated day trips um, by county, and then we're also going to be doing them across, say, week-long trips across the entire Upper Cumberland. Uh, and so, of course, whenever um, this idea was presented, Tommy Lee brought Chuck um, Sutherland in, and with his GIS genius, he saw that we could create these story maps um, in this digital format. And so you can see here, there's an actual map that uh, we're building this so that a person in a car can connect to this GPS and actually follow this route if they so choose. Yes, and so you can see this is Jackson County. We started here, um, you can see that we kind of, as we go down through here, we tell a little story, a little narrative, and a person can follow along in their car to see it. And of course, Chuck also included his beautiful photography there. And with each one of these as well, um, you know, Jackson County, we, we did include um, Bull and Thistle and Stone Coin, um, but in each county, we're going to be pushing these travelers to retail, um, lodging, um, and restaurants, of course, because we ultimately we want to drive revenue to uh, your small businesses and and tax revenue to your budgets as well. So that's that's our ultimate goal, and also really to make sure that we you know we build awareness for the entire region, um, and that was really where WCTE comes in because I don't know if you know this when they when they rebranded to Central Tennessee they now reach 1.3 million, and so their largest growing market is the Nashville market. So that Nashville Murfreesboro area is a prime target market for the entire Upper Cumberland. And so, you want to explain more about that? Part? Just I would add to that. You know, obviously we're working hand in hand with the local chambers, and this material is going to be available for them to put on their websites. Uh, also, we have been working with Tennessee Tech, who's been doing a lot of branding work with a lot of our chambers. Uh, so our goal is to push this product out. Ruth Dial and the Tourism Association certainly has free reign to use this, uh, as well as your chambers. If you want to put this on your uh, local county or city website, you're free to do that as well. We, we want to push this material out as far as we can. Yes, and as we move forward in that collaboration with WCTE, yes, it's going to be um, digital um, broadcast. There's going to be several different <coughs> elements in how we bring this together, and we want to share that. We want to share that with each community and use it in as many different ways as possible. Chuck does really great uh, photography. Uh, we can do a lot of work like this behind the scenes, but this is where we need Becky, Magura, and WCTE to take it to that next level with their production staff to be able to film videos and put together uh, video digital copies of digital digital copies of video to be able to put on your Facebooks, uh, your websites, all of those type of social media is going to be huge. And we're very excited about that partnership with WCTE. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The second thing I have on my list, I'm going to have Holly Williams pop up here right quick. Uh, she wants to just give a quick update. And I know you've heard some different things as far as COVID and things dealing with the senior centers. Uh, I want Holly just to sort of touch base on what's going on with our senior population in the region and what the state's uh, asking us to do. Okay, thank you. Good morning. So I'm sure many of you, have, if not everybody, has heard that the push has been here recently to help get vaccinations to the 70 plus population. And that's primarily because about three weeks ago, only a third of that population had received the vaccine. So our state office is engaging the area agencies across the state in trying to identify seniors. One who, we're, what we're doing is we're reaching out to seniors that are participants at the senior centers and then those who are participants in our in-home services programs, those who receive home delivered meals, personal care, homemaker, et cetera. And so we've been busy the last three weeks making lots of telephone calls. Um, just with the in-home services clients alone, we're looking at making 1,500 or phone calls to at least 1,500 individuals. That doesn't even include the senior center participants, which are thousands more. And so our senior center director, you've maybe heard from some of your senior center director staff, um, they've been very busy calling these individuals, finding out A, have they had the vaccine? Uh, B, if they've not had the vaccine, do they want the vaccine? If they want the vaccine, do they need help making an appointment? Do they need help with transportation to get to the vaccination site, et cetera? 
So we've been compiling all of this information and we've also been uh, partnering with HRA with Holly Montooth and, and Kim England at HRA um, to help us get a plan as to how we can help connect the seniors with the vaccination sites. So the state office is working with the Department of Health and the governor's office to identify what they call strike sites. You've probably heard that term over the last few weeks. And these strike sites are places where they can come in and just for a short period of time, be it maybe a day, half a day, depending on the location, and inoculate a lot of individuals in a short period of time. And so we are working with the senior centers and some other entities to identify locations where they can, they can get seniors over the age of 70 to commit to getting the vaccine at some of these strike sites. At this point, we have two senior centers in the Upper Cumberland that feel like they can get at least 50 to 100 seniors to come to their center for the vaccine. And that's kind of the threshold for them to be determined to strike site. There needs to be at least 50 to 100 who would be willing to come on a particular day. So the two senior centers at this point who have been able to, to identify those seniors are the Cookville Senior Center and then the Fair Park Senior Center up in Crossville. Um, during this period of time, we've also been asked to identify all the affordable senior housing complexes in the Upper Cumberland and, and talk, reach out to those managers, et cetera, and find out if they have seniors who, who are still wanting the vaccine at a minimum of 50 again. And so we do have three affordable senior housing complexes in the region that said that yes, they're interested and they've reached out to their residents and they feel like they can get at least 50 to commit. Um, our state office has shared these senior center sites, these affordable housing facility sites with the Department of Health. Now, nothing has been confirmed 100% just yet that these will be strike sites, but that's the plan, that's the, the goal that we're moving towards is that they will be able to be deemed strike sites. Um, the other piece I mentioned just a few minutes ago was in relation to in-home services clients. So there's a lot of seniors out there who cannot, because of barriers with transportation, et cetera, they're unable to get to the vaccination sites. So again, we're, we're partnering with Holly Montooth and her team uh, to get a plan as to how we can help in that regard. Um, but we're also working, our, our state office is working with the Tennessee Association of Home Care to identify home health agencies and first responders in each of the counties that would be willing to go to the homes of those individuals who are homebound and cannot get to those sites. They, this week, they are piloting this initiative with the Tennessee uh, Association of Home Care in Shelby County. And so the plan is to gradually roll this out across the state in the other counties. I foresee that this initiative is gonna take a little bit longer because they're wanting that they're not wanting to bombard the home health agencies and others, but try to just do one county um, or maybe, maybe as this progresses, they might do a few counties at a time, but anyway, they're starting out very slow with this. So at this point, that's what the, the initiatives that we have in place to try to help get the 70 plus population uh, inoculated. And of course, in the meantime, as we've been making all these phone calls and identifying these individuals, they did re reduce the age down to 65 plus. So we are now able to include the 65 plus in the, the numbers for the strike sites. But um, if you happen to have areas in your communities other than senior centers or um, affordable housing facilities where there's pockets of this population that maybe we're not taking into consideration, we'd love to know that. Yes, sir. Who's going to be administering the vaccine at these strike sites? You may have said that, I'm not a So at, at the strike sites, it would be the health department. Is it on our senior center in County County's right there at the Exactly, yes, so yeah. Our, our problem hasn't been getting seniors that want jobs to get those doses. Okay. So. Angela expressed interest to our state office that she would like, I think maybe because she's reaching out directly to participants that typically come to her center and um, maybe just that one-on-one -on -one contact, they've been willing to commit to coming to her center to get it. 
Um, so, but she did express that she felt like, even though she is across the street, that she could help identify some, at least that minimum of 50 that would come on a particular day. We're also, uh, I did not mention the housing facilities in Crossville, the Crossville Housing Authority has reached out to us and they're interested in serving as a site as well. So um, she's making contacts with her residents at, that, at this time. The other two uh, affordable senior housing complexes that expressed interest are the Holiday House in Cannon County. And um, here in Putnam County, we have Highlands Residential. They have several low-income housing complexes. They actually have a uh, low-income senior housing complex directly across the street from the Cookville Senior Center. So that's where they're focusing on right now is identifying seniors in that complex that could come across the street to the Senior Center at the same time. So. And Holly and Kim, if you guys have anything to add to this, please feel free to do so. This is a partnership for sure. Okay. Um, I'd just like to say that I do appreciate the partnership. And, you know, it, it's a challenge for everybody. But I, I would like to mention that if you do have residents in your county that need transportation to the front, the distribution sites, please don't hesitate to reach out. We've been in communication with all of our county coordinators. We are trying our best to accommodate any all right, thank you for sharing that because through we also contract with the HRA to provide uh, trips on the UCART spans to those age 16 above. We have a ticket a voucher system, ticket system, and so anybody 16 above that needs assistance with that transportation, we can provide them with these tickets and they can ride the UCARTs at no cost. So if you have individuals that, you know, financially need that assistance as well, refer them to us and we'll be happy to help. And it's not just for the vaccines. These are trips in the counties for, to go to the grocery store, to go to the doctors, or their doctor's appointments, et cetera. So. Is that for my right to doctors or? It, that's all the same, right, Holly? Yes. That's correct. Okay, yes. 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 I do have a question. The first of all, I want to thank you for what you're doing. It's a very important service. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, we have within a city of pocket of people that we would like to mm -hmm. give this opportunity to should we contact you? Yes, that'd be perfectly fine. And then I'll be more than happy to push that up to our state office. They're they're working directly with the state department of health and then they're going to be pushing this down to the counties once they they commit to having these strike sites. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll be happy to, to run that up the chain. Yes. Now can you cross the county if seniors from one county want to go to the other county? It is a strike site. Um, I can and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think at this point there's not any hardcore criteria in that regard, but they're moving in that direction. Is that correct? With the well, cross crossing counties? Mm -hmm. Okay. From my understanding, I think mean, you can go to any uh, about mm -hmm. the site regardless of the county. Okay. 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 This lots of moving pieces. It's moving fast, lots of moving pieces and Still, this is all gonna be contingent on the Department of Health establish or committing to these being strike sites, but we're, we're very hopeful this is going to occur. So. All right, any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Holly. I know her and her staff have done a great amount of work. They've, they, one day we made so many phone calls out of the building that Twin Lakes tagged us as spam, uh, <laughs> a, a spam place. And I, I don't think they were talking about extended warranties or anything like that. So, but anyway, thank you for, for everything you've done there. Next on my agenda, I, I've, I've got Jessa Hersner. Now this is a new face for you. Come on up, Jesse, Jessa. Uh, I, I wanted Jessa to have an opportunity to just talk a little bit about uh, her nonprofit that she has started. And she's wanting to expand that into a few more rural communities. And I, I, I'm gonna be honest, I'm really excited about what Jessa is bringing towards, she's, she's got it going here now in the Putnam County uh, area, but she wants to take this out farther into the rural regions. And uh, she's gonna explain her program. And I think with everything going on with our children right now, a program like what Jess is bringing is going to be very vital. So Jess, I'm going to let you talk just a little bit. Okay. I wanted to start by saying thank you to Mark for putting up with me. Um, he's always so patient and helpful, and I really appreciate Amy as well. Thank you. Um, so I read a quote actually on Instagram yesterday that said, your greatest contribution to the world may not be something that you do, but who you raise. And as a mom, that really spoke to me. Um, and I've been in education for 12 years. 
and helping kids find what helps them learn best is something that's really important to me. Um, sorry, I get so nervous talking in front of people. So um, Imagine Foundry is a place where kids can create freely. Um, we call ourselves a maker space or a maker lab. I'm not sure has anybody ever heard of such a thing. It's kind of new, but not really. Um, it's just slow, slow moving. I think it started in like California and some of the northern states and has kind of been sweeping its way across the nation. And so in our maker lab, we have uh, about 14 different rooms where, um, you know, I asked my son this morning, he's 11, I said, what would you say to a room full of people if you could explain, you know, what is Imagine Foundry? And he said, well, it's a place where kids can go make stuff. Well, okay, um, anything else you would add? And he said, you know, like his little sister, um, JJ, she can be creative. She can just go and make things with tools that she doesn't have at home. And she also has people there who can help her to create even when she gets stuck or she doesn't know how to make something. Um, and he, he also said that there are so many different spaces that have different types of tools and different types of equipment that anybody could find something really exciting in Imagine Foundry to do. Um, we know that some of the barriers our kids are facing now are, um, of course, last year threw a wrench in there for everybody, but just um, having access to extracurricular programs, whether it's uh, because they have a low income family who can't afford those resources, or um, whether it's because they can't get transportation. Uh, we do have a location here in Cookville, but um, not every family can make it. Uh, I know a lot of families that do programs with us might live on the mountain and they'll say, well, we can't get off the mountain today or we're not gonna be able to make it in. And so we actually um, are part of a program with Maker Ed out of California called Making Spaces and the goal is to, instead of having to have the kids come to us, us to go to the kids. Um, and so we are looking for people interested in partnering with us to build maker labs in, um, we'd like to start with schools uh, because we know that the kids are there already. Um, so elementary schools or middle schools where we don't already have a STEM lab or a maker lab program for those children. And um, as a part of that, Imagine Foundry would be providing professional development and helping to educate the teachers on how they can utilize that uh, as a part of learning for the kids and kind of in com conjunction with what they're doing with them already. Um, I did bring some things to display for you if you want to gander over on the side here. And I believe we emailed this out to those of you who are virtual, um, some stories from our Maker Lab just to help you connect with the kids that have been a part of our programs and how they feel about Imagine Foundry. Um, I'm sure they could explain it much better than me. Uh, and some examples of things that have been created. Um, so we are again looking for partnerships to help us with, um, first of all, deciding where we could establish these maker labs in our communities, as well as um, financial support to build the maker lab itself within the school. And um, also just helping us to spread the word that we exist. Uh, we started in 2019 and we were completely mobile. Um, I met Craig Hughes and Mr. Farley and found a place to call home. Um, <laughs> two months before COVID. Uh, and so we were also forced to shut down. Um, thankfully, like I said, with y'all's patience and, and kindness, we've been able to stay, stay alive and even grow a little bit um, over the last year. And it's been really amazing to see uh, how the kids and families have been able to interact in our space. And um, we're really thankful and looking forward to more opportunities in the future.
and I would highly encourage you, if you would, uh, if you'd be willing to do, is help her make contacts with the school boards or, or the people at your schools. If you've got an elementary school you think it'd work really well with. Uh, I'm very excited having seen what all these uh, young people do in, in the maker space. It's very exciting. And, and you know, the, especially with everything going on right now, with so many children, I'm afraid, being left behind, this is an opportunity for, for them to catch up and to do some things that's going to help stimulate their growth and, and learning. So okay. thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I've, I've got two more quick things and I'm going to be done for, for my report. It's been a long one today, I know. Uh, Henry, I think, there's Henry, he's sticking his head in the back door back there. Henry Bowman does all of our statistics and the the, the economist for the region has been doing a lot of work on sales tax and I know he sends this information out to you. We just wanted to touch base just quickly. Uh, your, uh, his report he just has sent out or just prepared uh, is really basically our Christmas season you see in the Upper Cumberland. And he and I were looking yesterday. Uh, if you've not looked at your sales tax numbers, they're going through the roof. But, I, but we want to caution you. Obviously, our economy is doing really well. We feel like there are a lot of positive things moving in the right direction. But, you know, he and I was talking yesterday about the effect of the uh, stimulus checks that have been put into our region. And I think you as elected officials, as you're putting together your budgets and looking at next year's budget, while these numbers are great, you need to be careful about budgeting off of these numbers. You know, he and I did a little rough math yesterday and just taking, uh, saying roughly 75% of our population has received uh, the stimulus checks that have come out already. And, and you know, really 75% probably is a conservative number. It's probably a little bit higher than that of the actual citizens in our region that have received that. Um, if they do another $1,400, which is being talked about now, you gotta keep in mind over the last year, less than a year, we will have almost a billion dollars of new money that's been pumped into our region. That's made a huge effect on our sales tax. Obviously that, being able to capture the online sales tax really has been the saving grace for I know a lot of our municipalities and our, and our counties. Uh, but as you work on your budget, just keep in mind, there's been a lot of money pumped and that doesn't even take into account the unemployment benefits, the extra unemployment benefits. So uh, we just wanted to talk about that, just talk about the impact of those stimulus checks. This $1,400 check they're talking about passing, uh, hopefully in the next stimulus bill that comes out, uh, that would be uh, $367 million in and of itself. And you sort of divvy that money out population per capita to sort of see what it, your, its effect is on your uh, individual community. So just keep that in mind as you're getting ready to start your budgets, you know, be very conservative on your sales tax because a lot of those numbers are going to start dropping after this money flows through the system. The last thing I just wanted to touch on, I know quite a few of our communities are served by Volunteer Electric Cooperative. Um, I, I know it serves a, a very large footprint in, in East Tennessee and then catching into uh, somewhat of the Upper Cumberland. Um, TVA reached out to us uh, last week and met with us uh, about an issue going on with uh, Volunteer Electric where they are applying for uh, uh, a change in, in, in status or a regulation change that will allow them to pull energy from another provider to go away from TVA. Um, just keep in mind, as those elected officials sitting around the room, you need to think about that long and hard because that pay TVA payment loop, you know, that, that will probably be affected. Uh, our economic development efforts that TVA does for us will be affected because of that. It's going, to, it's going to touch some of the tools that we have in our toolbox. So uh, I think Shannon Scott, a lot of you have met Shannon over the years, uh, works for TVA, her, the, I think the government, lead, government liaison for our area. Uh, I think she'll probably be reaching out to you individually one-on-one, -on -one, uh, but uh, just, just know that's a situation that's brewing. Now you may, have a, you may be fine with that happening. You may think it'll be better for your community and that's, that's your prerogative. Uh, just just always keep in mind, anytime a major change like that happens, there's always positive consequences and there's always negative consequences. You, you need to know what those negative consequences are before it happens. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have under my report, so. Thank you, Mr. Farley, for the executive director's report. Uh, 
Any questions or comments about that? And I, I, I was going to do our, our partners. I'm sorry, I did yep. forget that. I, and talking about this federal issue, we do have quite a few of our federal partners uh, with us today. I know uh, I'm going I'm to go down the line. We got Senator Desjardins. Uh, if you want to uh, say anything. Uh, I'm Amy Dennis, the Congressman Desjardins office. All right. I'm Shirley Conn, the Congressman Desjardins office. And I represent Van Buren, and she represents Warren. Okay. So that's our participation here. So we got Deja Lay's office in the in the building. Any updates from from the congressman, or just uh, fighting over this bill? <laughs> As you all well know, so we we're not really sure what's going to happen. Um, this is really, I think, been the first week that we've had a school session in several weeks. That's about all I know that's going on up here right now. Okay. We also have Kelly Puckett with uh, uh, Congressman or Senator Blackburn's uh, office uh, here with us today. Any updates from Senator Blackburn's office? Well, I just want to say, so happy to be here. This is a great uh, community, and I represent Van Buren and Warren. Um, Senator Blackburn, and I'm here to represent Warren. Um, and I right now, as Shirley said, you know, there's a lot of talk about this next stimulus. We hear from a lot of people that actually you know, do and need this money. We've had a lot of people that didn't receive some of the stimulus money at all. We have people that across the state who still haven't received any employment like they should. Uh, so we're working with Drive Up to get all of those things um, you know, working in the right direction with the state. Um, the senator has been very involved with uh, doing virtual tours, so she'll be reaching out to uh, do virtual meetings with, with mayors. Um, and she's always asking about the vaccine, and, and I really appreciate the update on the vaccine and the rollout. And um, that's been very uh, important to her. And also, uh, just working with uh, grants, let me just say, she is really pushing grants. So if you have any grants that you're applying for in your communities, um, if there's any way that we can offer a letter of support for those grants, Happy to do so. We also have Tanner Cox with Senator Haggerty's office. I think he's probably been around and met quite a few of you, but anything, Tanner, you'd like to say to the group? Yeah, well, I thank all you guys for uh, having me here today. Uh, Senator Haggerty is actually establishing an office here in Cookville to cover the same 14 counties that uh, are with the Upper Cumberland Development District here today. So I'm very excited to be working for him and to be. Uh, representing this region and just know that uh, if you haven't met me yet, I would love to, to catch up with you after the meeting, but I'm always here to be a helping hand for you guys. Uh, whatever you need from our office, whatever we can do, we're kind of in an interesting space here because getting to, uh, to work with these 14 counties directly is, is an opportunity I'm very excited about. And I've been excited to, to get around the region all already and start assisting with grant support letters and everything else that our office uh, can do to help you guys. So yeah. if you haven't met me, I would love to meet you after the meeting. Very thankful to be here today. Okay. I think we have Rebecca Foster online uh, from Congressman Rose's office. Anything, Rebecca, from Congressman Rose? Sure. Uh, good to see you guys virtually today. Um, uh, looking forward to being able to be back in the room with you again soon. Um, just a few things. Uh, Bonnie Warren is on the call, but she's uh, today representing uh, Senator Haggerty. She's moved to that office. So I wanted to announce to you today that our new caseworker and community relations person is going to be starting on March the 1st. You may know her from uh, her previous work here in Putnam County. She currently is uh, working at the Chamber of Commerce, the Putnam County, Cookville Putnam County Chamber of Commerce. Her name is Jenny Spurlock. And so we're excited to have her coming on board next Monday. Um, and also just wanted to, to thank Tyler Asher. We've had a, a, you know, a lot of calls, uh, constituent services calls with regard to the, the PPP, uh, the IDL. And Tyler has been very helpful to us and our constituents. And, and we've kind of mutually helped uh, our, our folks in the community together to navigate through that process. and. Um, 
I'll echo what everyone else has said from the other uh, offices. If we can be of any assistance to the folks in our uh, district, please reach out to us. Thank you. I think we also have Ruth Dial and maybe Tara Vogelith. Ruth, uh, anything to add from uh, tourism? I'm not sure. I think that's Ruth on there. Yes, I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> I um, Yes, we are actually doing pretty good. We're working on our magazine right now, but uh, with the CARES Act money, we had uh, uh, made uh, videos and uh, quite a large promotion campaign, and it's really taking off very well. We have people from all over Tennessee calling us and wanting to know where they can do all the things that we advertise. So we're in a pretty good shape there. And we're working on the magazine that's gonna come out in uh, beginning of March and will be all over uh, Tennessee. So that's basically all I have and I thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Tara, anything from TDEC? You may not be on there. I'm not sure if we have anybody else. So, okay, that's all. All right. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Farley. The next thing is on the agenda is a strategic plan by Executive Director Mark Farley. Yeah, you do have in your uh, packet of information our strategic plan. We've we've done one for the development district. We also have one very similarly uh, put together for the Human Resource Agency. We'll talk about it in a, in a few minutes. Uh, we're very excited about this. We went through and uh, worked on a new vision and mission statement, uh, as well as some internal goals. Uh, you you should have received that ahead of time. I don't really want to get into the details of that. Uh, I don't want to take up too much time, but uh, uh, would would ask that you approve that strategic plan so we can put that in the books as a, as official document for us. So I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have. Anybody got any questions for Mr. Farley on the strategic plan for 21-22? I got a motion by Mr. Mayor Stribling to approve the strategic plan for 2021-2022. We have a second by Mr. Marvin. Anyone else have any questions or comments? If not, we will ask Ms. Sherry to call the roll. Hale Raven? Yes. Yeah. Alan Foster? Yes. James Mayberry? Yes. Ms. Griffin? Yes. Jimmy Johnson? Yes. Randy Haney? Yes. Lauren Williams? Yes. Steve Jones? Yes. Jerry Wilmore? Yes. Dan Banner? Yes. Adam Gibson? Yes. Randy Porter? Yes. Jeff Mason? Yes. Sarah Yes. Yes. A motion passed. Thank you all. Next thing on the uh, agenda, you done, Mr. Brown? Yes, I'm, I'm good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is uh, to appoint a committee to evaluate uh, the executive director of the UCDD. Uh, do I need to approve or do I just need to announce? I need to appoint. All right. So I have here. Uh, Alan Foster, Cumberland County Mayor, uh, DeKalb County Mayor Tim Stribling, Warren County Mayor Jimmy Haley, uh, Vice Chair of Smith County Mayor Jeff Mason, and myself. So that'll be the uh, evalu evaluation committee for executive director. All righty, uh, is there any old business that we need to attend to, Mr. Parson? Any of y'all have any old business, any new business? All right, um, I got just two things. One, Mr. Uh, Mr. Reagan, uh, Mayor Reagan's on here. It's really good to see him on here. He just had hip replacement surgery, uh, I think, and that's the reason he's on here. Dale, it's good to see you. I hope you're doing okay. Yeah, we're, we're doing good. Thank you all. So if y'all would continue to pray for Dale as he uh, is recovering. I know that's a serious surgery, but I was impressed. 
see him on here this morning. So good to have you, Dale. Just missed it a minute ago. The other thing was that it's the first time I've seen that, Chuck, and that's really nice. The day trip to Jackson County. I will say it says if you can put your GPS in. I'm going to encourage everyone if you want to do that, download it before you leave because <laughs> there'll be places that you won't have it in Jackson. <laughs> All right. With that being said, uh, entertain the motion to adjourn. Motion. Got a motion by uh, Denny Wayne. Second by Alan Foster. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Aye. <laughs> Motion passed. We're adjourned. Right. Do we need to take a break? Or Do we need to take a break? Y'all want to dive right into the next? Dive in. Dive in, they say. You're just hungry, Jim. <laughs> All right, and we'll call the UCHRA Policy County Policy Council meeting to order. If you would, we'll get started. Thank you, anyone who's got to leave. That's all right. Ms. Sherry, if you would, call roll. Green Bush. Dale Raven. Here. Alan Foster. Here. James Mayberry. Here. Tim Strickland. Here. Jimmy Johnson. Here. Randy Haney. Here. Steve Jones. Here. Ben Danner. Here. Harry Gardner. Here. Randy Porter. Here. John Martin. Here. Jeff Mason. Here. Sabre Marie Smith. Here. Greg Wilson. Jimmy Haley. Here. Barbara Buzz. Yes. Jimmy Robinson. Oh. He's here to step that. Ethel Hunter. Lori Stringfield. Kelly Tipton. Jimmy Adcock. Here. Linda Upchurch. Barbara Wheeler. Here. Lynette Shaw, Patty Holbert, Linda Pastrick, here. Johnny Wheeler, Morris Benson, Don Hollingsworth, Meryl Davis, here. Cheryl Sullivan, here. All righty, we have a form that we can proceed. So the next thing on the agenda is the approval of consent agenda, which is the policy council meeting from October 21st, 2020, and also the UCHRA drug and alcohol policy. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this and the amendments? I Got a motion by Mayor Jones to approve. Second by Mayor Johnson. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Yes. Any opposed say aye. Motion passed. I did good, didn't I? I slowed down a little bit. I'm done. I'm trying. I'm trying to do better. Just a little nervous. But I'll be all right. Next thing on the agenda is the UCHRA financial report by Ms. Ginger Stout. Signing script. So the financial report for UCHRA also goes to December 31st uh, with total revenues of $10,280,000 and grant expenditures of $10,184,000. So you'll also see on the right side where our matching revenues come from. We have state appropriation. We also have our dues from our cities and county. Uh, we just recently resent out letters because 
We understand that a lot of your revenue comes from property taxes, and this is um, a better time for the counties and cities um, to pay those dues. Also, we have our non-grant related expenditures, which is, includes our lakeside payment, um, our interest on our line of credit. And so if you look, um, you can see our unrestricted revenue, we're in a deficit of $317,000 um, at this point in the year. Now, the biggest portion of that would be with our residential programs that we've been working with um, and our nutrition program. Obviously, we have concluded our nutrition program as of December 31st. Um, and then we also applied for a PPP loan, which was approved and we've actually just received funds of, of $1.7 million. And so that's gonna help offset this deficit as the year progresses. That PPP loan um, is for 24 weeks. And so that will cover salaries and fringe for our fee-for-service type of programs like our residentials. And so as those fees come in um, for the next 24 weeks, the PVP loan will be covering the salaries and fringe. And so that will help us to dig out of this deficit as the year progresses. And so we're really excited about that. Like I said, we just received the funds last week. And so that's for sure approved. Money's in the bank. And so that's going to really help those programs that have been hit the hardest by the pandemic. Um, just see the court system slowing down. Um, it's really had a, a negative impact on those types of programs. So I don't know if anybody has any questions related to the report. Looks good. Looks good. Any questions for Ms. Ginger? All righty. If there's no questions, I entertain a motion to approve the financial report of the CHRA. So moved. Second. Got a motion by Mayor Foster and a second by Mayor Danner. All right, Ms. Yes. If you would call up. Mayor Reagan? Yes. Alan Foster? Yes. James Mayberry? Yes, yes. Sam Stripper? Yes. Jimmy Johnson? Yes. Randy Kane? Yes. Dave Jones? Yes. Ben Danner? Yes. Randy Porter? Yes. Jeff Mason? Yes. Sam Marie Smith? Yes. Jimmy Hayden? Yes. Harvey Russ? Yes. Kenny Robinson? Yes. Yes. All right. Motion passed. Next thing on the agenda would be the Van Buren County Head Start program. Mr. Yeah, and there's quite a bit of information there, and I uh, there and again, uh, the majority of your packet is is the information dealing with Head Start, and I, I just remind you that they require us to break all that down and make sure that it's in the minutes that you've received all this information. This is basically our reports going back through November and December. Uh, the, the transactions that's going on. We do have uh, in there, I think, some carryover budgets and, and various things, uh, but basically it's all just regular reoccurring uh, action items that we do every month. So I just need to uh, ask you to do a approval of those so they'll be included in the minutes. All righty. Uh, any questions about this? Van Buren Head Start report. If not, entertain a motion to approve. A motion by Mayor Danner, second by Mayor Foster. Did you call up? Dale Raven? Yeah. Alan Foster? Yes. James Mayberry? Yes. Kim Stribben? Yes. Jimmy Johnson? Yes. Randy Candy? Yes. Dave Jones? Yes. Dan Danner? Yes. Yes. Jeff Mason? Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. If you would move it right along, the next thing on the agenda the agenda is the CSBG by Ms. Linnell. And if you want to turn, you can, you can flip through to the blue tab. That should take you to where Linnell. And I want to finish up right quick uh, on the Head Start. Uh, I know we've talked about it quite frequently. We did apply to put three Head Start centers in White, Warren, and Van Buren. We are still waiting word on that. They've not been notified either way, whether or not we've received it or been turned down. So we're, we're hoping this is a good sign that a lot of new funding is coming along and hopefully we will uh, get those three projects funded. But that closes out Head Start. All right, thank you. Good morning, everyone. So if you do flip to your binders, we have put some information. We're required to report on the Community Services Block Grant, which is a federal block grant run through um, the Department of Human Services here in Tennessee and then um, to be a community action agency to receive those funds, which UCHRA is de um, designated as. So if you look, not all these programs are the CSVG programs. We kind of give you a just a breakdown of what's happening out in the counties. But if you will look at the column labeled CARE Act CSB, that is our community stability program through CSVG. And if someone's been affected by COVID, then they could apply for assistance for rent utilities or food vouchers, basic necessity vouchers, which would include a little bit more than food. So for the first quarter, um, looking at it on the federal fiscal year, October through December, we served 43 clients um, to the tune of a little over $47,000. Then if you look at the, um, the next column over, that is not related to CARES, but can still cover rent, utilities, and food vouchers. And we assisted 104 individuals um, at a little, almost $38,000. So this kind of breaks down what's happening out in the counties. We also have another sheet that talks about two programs, STAR program, um, so, um, sufficiency, self-sufficiency training and results program, which is funded through CSBG. And in that first quarter, we've served 22 clients' households, but those clients have received 107 services. Also, you notice our team program. It's also funded by the Department of Human Services and focuses on that two generational approach. We've served 31 households clients with that and we've administered 128 services to those um, families and individuals. So we're very pleased. Our numbers are growing every month with what um, the services that are being provided through the counties. So does anyone have any questions about the, the CSBG um, first quarter report. They would at the local UCHRA office, yes. And we have with our strategic plan, our initiative um, or our goal was to have at least 80% of the clients that <clears throat> apply for CSBG to receive multiple services. We wanna look at that holistically. I think some of you guys have heard me say that in the past. So for the first quarter, we're at 66%. So our goal is to get to 80, but 66% of these CSBG clients received other services such as commodities, LIHE, different things like that. All right, the last thing I wanted to just provide an update, we will no longer be contracting um, or administering the Ryan White program. That's a program that serves clients that are HIV positive or have AIDS. And that contract will end April the 1st. Um, we have worked with this program since before I've been here. It's a very small program. We also recently had worked with the Hawkwood program that served the same clientele in housing um, assistance. And there's another agency that has expanded into our area that that is their primary goal and focus 100% of their services 
is dedicated toward that group. So we have stepped back a little bit from that program and they are hoping to expand into this agency. We're working with our, or into this district, I apologize. And we're working with our clients to transition. What we did with the Ryan White program was provide some transportation assistance through gas cards to get to doctor's appointments related to their diagnosis and also provided some food cards so that they could um, identify and purchase healthier food or certain foods that their physician stated would make a difference to their care. So we're excited about the new agency. We'll still be serving these clients in other capacities because a lot of them were enrolled in our LIHEAP or our commodities. So I just wanted to, to make you guys aware of that. Obviously, the other in, uh, organizations moving in is a very established organization out of the Knoxville area. It just really doesn't make sense for the clients, for them to have to go two different places to receive this service. So um, based on the size of it, we just felt like it's best to, to let this move over to them. That way they, can, they provide the complete package for these individuals that are in this situation. All right. Thank you guys very much. Good. Uh, you ready to move on to yep. the next thing? Yep. Any questions about that? Report. Ms. Linnell. All righty, we'll move on to the next thing on the agenda, which is the transportation approvals. Uh, Ms. Holly. Good morning. Um, I do believe this is my first opportunity to get to address the board as your transportation director. And I would like to say that I am very honored and feel as though this is a great privilege to have this opportunity. So thank you very much. Um, I would just like to mention that we, the transportation department was able to secure $130,000 in CARES Act funding for the purchase of our wheelchair securement bars. We received the bars on site yesterday and have a very aggressive plan to have one bar installed in each transit vehicle per county by March 5th. After that, we will rotate our fleet out weekly to ensure that every transportation vehicle has a wheelchair safety bar. So we're very proud for this. Also, we received a $1.3 million grant for the purchase of re replacement vehicles. We have issued the PO for this purchase and we will be replacing all 28 vehicles who have met their useful life in all 14 counties. And this grant did require a 10% match and that match will come from our dedicated transportation fund balance. And finally, I'm very pleased to announce that we also received a $300,000 grant from the IMPROVE Act. And this grant is going to be used towards a comprehensive transportation plan. Now this plan will look at our total operation from our capital investments through our routes, our services, give us pointers on what we're doing good, areas that we can improve. So we're just really excited for that. So any questions as far as our transportation operations? Well, again, if you think of anything later and you have questions or concerns, just feel free to reach out. Approval. There's a page in there for the transportation department. Yeah, you're talking about the uh, resolution or just the just transportation yeah. department? Okay, yeah, I see that now. We do need approval of this transit department secured $130,000 of CARES Act funding. Uh, and then the department is boarded at $1,336,626 and then another $300,000 in the approved act. Got a motion by Mayor Danner and seconded by Mayor Jones. All right, there's no other comments or discussion about that. We'll ask. Sherry to call roll. Hale Reagan? Yes. Alan Foster? Yes. James Mayberry? Yes. Kim Stripper? Jimmy Johnson? Yes. Randy Yes. Dave Jones? Yes. Ben Danner? Yes. Randy Porter? Yes. Jeff Mason? Yes. Sergeant Jerry Smith? Yes. Jimmy Haley? Yes. Marvin Lust? Yes. Kenny Robinson? Yes. Kenny Adcock? Yes. 
Barbara Wheeler? Yes. Linda Pastor? Yes. Marilyn Davis? Yes. Joel Sullivan? Yes. All right, motion passed. Next thing on the agenda is the community corrections report uh, by Mr. Farley with the resolution 21-2-1. Yeah, I've, I've spoke to some of you about this already. Uh, we do have an issue that's developing in the General Assembly this session. Uh, under the governor's uh, judicial task force reform package that he has filed, one of the things that they have done is to eliminate in that proposed legislation uh, the community corrections program that uh, Cheryl uh, Davis, where is Cheryl at? Wave. Cheryl has administered, and, and I know that goes back to the 80s, I think, is when that was first put in place. Uh, we're very concerned about that. Obviously, we, we hate to lose that as a program. We think it's very beneficial. We serve a, a target population there and are able to keep them out of incarceration. Uh, we think it's a very valuable service to our citizens. On the flip side, the judges uh, and the DAs, we have met with them. They are adamantly opposed to this as well. This takes a tool away from them. They're not able to send us people to community corrections. They, they feel like their hands will be tied and they will have to incarcerate people that really need one more step to, uh, or an opportunity to, to avoid incarceration. So we have a resolution put together here, just asking that the board uh, send this to the General Assembly. Obviously I'll be supporting this on to all the relevant committees and individuals, uh, asking them to, uh, to take this wording out of this proposed legislation and let the Community Corrections Act of 1985 continue on as is. Anybody have any uh, questions or comments for Mr. Farley? I believe the concern here, me and Mr. Farley discussed this pretty pretty well a couple of weeks ago, was the, the current concern is what might work in an urban area. Uh, we're not so sure it's going to work in a rural area. Okay, so am I correct yeah. in saying that? So most of us here are rural. This, it, yes, it is uh, behind the blue tab right there, resolution 21-2-1. Uh, basically what they're rewriting is to do a uh, day reporting center for people who have to come in and report, which obviously in an urban area makes sense. It doesn't work in a rural community. Our judges and the DAs are, are adamantly opposed to that, so. All right, any other questions? Thank you, Mayor Smith. If not, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve. Got a motion by Ben. Good. Got a second by Denny Wayne. All right, if you would, Sherry, when you get ready, you can call Rogan. Dale Raven? Yes. Alan Foster? Yes. James Mayberry? Yes. Yes. Jenny Johnson? Yes. Randy Handy? Yes. Steve Jones? Yes. Ben Banner? Yes. Randy Porter? Yes. Jeff Mason? Yes. Sarah Marie Smith? Yes. Jimmy Haley? Yes. Arvin Hudd? Yes. Dean Robinson? Yes. Billy Adcock? Yes. Barbara Weir? Yes. Linda Pastry? Yes. Marilyn Davis? Yes. Cheryl Sullivan. Okay. Yes. All right. Motion passed. Um, potential policy executive board legislative changes. Director Farrell. I think I mentioned uh, a meeting or two ago. Uh, obviously, we went through a sunset review where the uh, the state comptroller's office come in and looked at the human resource agencies across the state, not just us, but all nine across the state of Tennessee. One of the recommendations that they come out of that report uh, was to look at the board structure for the human resource agencies. Uh, I, I don't wanna get into all the details right now. We may have to come back and have a, uh, a special meeting of some type in the future to look at our bylaws. But the comptroller's office, along with the, the joint ops of uh, joint government ops committee uh, have been working 
Thankfully, they've been working with us to try and look at how they want to rechange our or change our legislation. And the goal is to sort of shrink the size of the boards. They feel like that, the, uh, and this is not just at human resource agencies. They've been doing this systematically with other agencies across the state. Uh, most notably, you've heard a lot about the UT board, uh, the board of trustees. They reduced the size of it. Uh, and they are systematically looking at all boards and commissions across the state. Uh, it's just our time in the spotlight. Uh, they do want to see the size and structure uh, reduced so it's a more manageable group. Uh, my guess is uh, development districts will be next, although we don't fall under sunset review. Uh, that will probably hit us sometime in the next year or two. They've already started asking questions on its side as well. So I just want to let you know that these changes are coming. Obviously, I've talked to, to Danny Raiders a little bit about it. Uh, and we'll have to get him involved as well, but our bylaws may need to be changed if they change the state statute. So that's uh, just an update. Thank you, Mr. Farley. Number 10 will be next. It's the donation of nutrition vehicles resolution 21-2-2. Yeah, I just want to touch. Obviously, we have stepped away from the nutrition program. We do have a, a few vehicles left over. To be quite honest, we only have two that's probably uh, in, in good enough condition that could continue on in doing this work. Obviously, with us no longer doing that uh, and it having been paid through nutrition funds, we would like to see uh, organizations that are doing nutrition receive these vehicles. Uh, Cannon County Senior Center, I've approached them. They have taken over. Uh, doing the nutrition program in, in Cannon County. And then obviously uh, our great uh, example program in Fentress County uh, is doing uh, a yeoman's work. And I, I would propose that these two vehicles, uh, what I want to do, I've got a pool of vehicles and I want them to have an opportunity to look at them, see what they want. But I think there's really only two that are decent. The rest of them will just be scrapped out and sold. Uh, these are very old vehicles with extremely high miles, except for two of them. So uh, if it's all right with the board, I'd like to work with Fentress County and Cannon County. If they would like to take one of these vehicles, that's fine. If they would rather not, then we will just scrap them and sell them. All right. I'm in support of that. Do you guys transfer equipment? Is there some equipment Yeah, there's a there's a few uh, like the warmer, like yeah. those boxes and stuff, and and there may be some other things like that. I know in storage, I think still down in Jackson County, we've got some trays, some cooking utensils, stuff like that. We don't need it, and 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 if they can use it, we want to just give it to them. So. Got a motion by Mayor Stripling to adopt this resolution 21 2 2. I get a second, Mayor Jones. All right, so we've got a first and a second. Ms. Sherry, you're ready. Mayor hey, Raven? Yes. Alan Foster? Yes. James Mayberry? Yes. Kim Stripling? Yes. Jimmy Johnson? Yes, ma'am. Randy Kennedy? Yes. Steve Jones? Yes. 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 Randy Porter. Yes. Jeff Mason. Yes. Sarah Bruce Smith. Yes. Jimmy Haley. Yes. Harvey Love. Yes. Kenny Robinson. Yes. Kenny Adcock. Yes. Bobby Weaver. Yes. Linda Pastry. Yes. Marilyn Davis. Yes. Cheryl Sullivan. Yes. Good motion passed. Uh, number eleven, we can skip. Ms. Holly actually covered that in the curb report uh, transportation. So the next thing that we'll go um, uh, number twelve, strategic plan by uh, UCHRA Executive Director Mark Clark. Same as I mentioned, under the upcoming development district, we've read uh, we've redid our strategic plan uh, for the next year or year and a half. Uh, that is there for your approval. We just want to put enter that into the minutes as it's being the official document. Got a motion by Mayor Jones. Got a second by Mayor Johnson. Any comments, questions about this? If not, we will ask Ms. Sherry to call roll. Mayor Raven? Yes. Alan Foster? Yes. James Mayberry? Yes. Tim Stribblin? Yes. Jimmy Johnson? Yes. Randy Kenny? Yes. Steve Jones? 
Yes. Dan Banner? Yes. Randy Porter? Yes. Mason? Yes. Cyrus Jordan Smith? Yes. Jimmy Haley? Yes. Marvin Lutz? Yes. Kenny Robinson? Yes. Kelly Adcock? Yes. Barbara Weaver? Yes. Linda Pastrick? Yes. Carolyn Davis? Yes. Cheryl Sullivan? Take that as a yes. All right, motion passed. Number 13, public comments. Do we have any anyone this evening will make or this morning, I should say, make a public comment. Something that we got knocked on one. That was another one. We gotta yeah. make sure that's on the agenda. Moving on, if there's not to old business, we got any old business today? Any new business? Anyone that's on the Zoom got any old or new business? We can give everybody an opportunity. A little fast. If not, I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn. I've got a motion uh, by Alan and a second by Danny Wayne. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Both <laughs> say aye. All right, we are adjourned. Let's move right on into our executive meeting, if you would, and we'll be done. This will be fairly quick. Y'all lay with us. We're, we're about there. We'll call the executive meeting to order also at this time, and we'll ask Ms. Sherry to call us. Great Bush, Andy Duncan, Dale Raven, Dale Spears, Alan Foster, James Mayberry, here. Tim Stripman. Here. Josh Miller. Jimmy Johnson. Here. Harvey Stowers. Randy Candy. Here. Lloyd Williams. Here. Steve Jones. Here. Jerry Wilmore. Here. Ben Danner. Curtis Hayes. Terry Garner. Sam Gibson. Here. Randy Porter. Here. Ricky Shelton. Jeff Mason. Here. Samuel Lewis Smith. Here. Greg Wilson. Nikki Robinson. Jimmy Haley. Here. Ryan Castain. Margaret Blood. Here. Danny Robinson. Here. Jeff Young. Representative Cameron Jackson. Jennifer Paul Bay. <clears throat> hey, yeah, committee. He up, yeah. We got a quorum. All right, we've established a quorum. We can move on. Next thing on the agenda. On the agenda is approval of the minutes. Uh, this was from the October 21st, and also the special call meeting we had on December 3rd, 2020. Obtain a motion to approve. Okay. Got a motion by Jeff Mason. Second by Mayor Smith. Any comments, amendments? If not, we can do that in all I can't leave. All in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed say aye. I'm trying. All right, next thing on the agenda is the ratification of action taken by the policy council, which we just had. Got a motion by Alan Foster. Got a second by Mayor Robinson to approve all action taken just a few minutes ago by the policy council. Any objections? All right. We call roll on that. Dale Reagan? Yes. Yeah. Alan Foster? Yes. James Mayberry? Yes. Tim Strickland? Yes. Jimmy Johnson? Yes. Randy Haney? Yes. Lloyd Williams? Yes. Steve Jones? Yes. 
Jerry Wilmore? Yes. Sam Gibson? Yes. Randy Porter? Yes. Jeff Mason? Yes. Cyber Marie Smith? Yes. Jimmy Hayden? Yes. Marvin Lund? Yes. Jimmy Robinson? Yes. Motion passed. Uh, the next thing was the pro pay Paycheck Protection Program, but again, Mr. Farley said we had covered that with Ms. Holly. So we'll move to the public comments. Do we have any public comments uh, during the executive committee meeting? I've got one thing I forgot. All righty, Mr. Farley. One thing, and I, I almost let him slip by. D friends, I stand up back there, D. D is our new HR uh, manager. Uh, we are excited about him. D has a wealth of experience in, in human resource uh, work here in the Upper Cumberland region, and we are excited to have him on board. He is high energy, and I think you'll enjoy getting to meet him. Uh, if anybody reaches out, employees reach out, and they ever have issues, I want you to know who D is. Feel free to send them to, to him. He is a uh, Going to be more than able to help in any situation. So, thank you, Dee, for being here today. Hey, Mark. Yes. Mark, if any of the mayors, anybody would like any stories about Dee, I've got several. So, feel free to call me at any time. <laughs> Do we need to call you in private, Randy? Yes, please. And don't record, please. <laughs> Just making sure. I, and I do have one more new, and I'm and I'm embarrass her. Sherry Bibbery, stand up. <laughs> I, I need a Sherry. I have Sherry Thurman here at the Development District, and that's not enough Sherry. Sherry can't. I needed another, so I come up with Sherry Bibbery. She is still doing the same role that Sherry uh, Thurman does here at the Development District. She's over at HRA, and we're excited about having her here as well. So I think that's all my new uh, my new people there in here right now. Do I? I've got too many Sherry's, Megan's, Holly's. Uh, we've probably got four, four of each one of them, just about. Hey, you need to balance it out. Uh, uh, the next thing we have is uh, old business. Any old business this morning? What about new business? Anybody? All right, we're going to take a motion to adjourn. Uh, Jimmy, and who, who was that back there? Anybody, just being down there. He's back there waving at me. All in favor say aye. Any opposed? Thank you. We are adjourned. <laughs> That's the